Good morning, everybody. I think we're going to have a little bit of a smaller crowd today, which is predictable on a holiday weekend. But I'm so glad that you can join us from wherever you are today, whether you're in this room with us physically today or if you're joining us online. We're so glad that you can join us and be connected to us in this way. And a very special welcome to Eric and his family joining us from Ocean Shores. And um, happy birthday, Julia, who is out there celebrating her birthday this week, too. Uh, with that, what other celebrations do we have happening this week? Do we have any birthdays in the room? No, we celebrated Jeff Johnson's birthday earlier today, about an hour ago. What about any anniversaries? No anniversaries this week? All right. Um, let's talk about prayer concerns or joys. What do we have happening for prayer concerns and joys this week? Anything? All right. I have a couple that we'll add to the list this week. So we'll be praying for Israel and Palestine, as we have been, for that conflict to resolve there. We will also be praying for Eric as he continues to walk through hospice, especially during this holiday season. And then we also had a request that we pray for Steve Poole, who was a weatherman in the area. I did not get the pleasure of seeing him predict weather for you, but it seems as though maybe he did an okay job because he's well known. So Steve passed away due to Alzheimer's, so we'll pray for his family and, um, and give thanks for the gifts that he used here in our community. Any other prayers that you would like to lift up today? All right. Um, before we move to our musical offering this morning, I want you to note that our worship is going to look a little bit different during Advent. So we're using Sanctified Art, which is a collection of clergy from across a couple different denominations uh, and a lot of different backgrounds who come together to write liturgies for Advent and Lent and some different things. So we're using their words today. So you're going to notice that some of the words are more contemporary than we've been using because it's a contemporary liturgy. You'll also notice through Advent as we use this that the way they've written this liturgy is for it to be very conversational. So it'll go back and forth. You'll be hearing a lot of call and response happening because they want it to be more of a communal experience between the leaders and the folks in the pews. So pay attention to that. See how that's happening. And the language you'll hear as we're going through this has a lot to do with our gospel story, which is about um, Zachariah and Elizabeth being told that they're going to have a baby who will be John the Baptist. So you'll be hearing that language in our call to worship and our confession and forgiveness. So be listening to that. And keep in mind that Zechariah, when he heard that this was happening, said, how can this possibly be? And so that's the background to what's happening coming into this litur liturgy today. So be listening to those pieces because it all comes together. So with that, I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we have our musical offering.
please rise as you are able for our call to worship. In God's house, we can be joyful. We can be grateful. We can be hopeful. In God's house, we can be weary. We can be anxious. We can be grieving. In God's house, we can be honest. This is God's house. You are welcome exactly as you are. We will now light our Advent wreath today. How does a weary world hope? by praying for children as they grow and picking up trash on the sidewalk. By insisting that small acts can make a difference. There are a million ways to practice hope. So today, we light a candle of hope as a reminder and a charge. With God's help, may we bring hope into a weary We join together in singing, Come to Me, O Weary Traveler, which is out of all creation sings. That's our new hymnal. So the words will be up on the screen. And please join in as you catch on to the tune. Gracious God, we are weary. For weary bodies that ache and cry out, we pray. Forgive us for pushing ourselves too hard. Remind us that we deserve Sabbath rest. For weary minds that feel overwhelmed and saturated with news, we pray. Forgive us for creating so many distractions. Remind us that in the quiet, we can hear you. For weary hearts that long to feel the joy of this season, we pray. Forgive us for being impatient with ourselves. Remind us that healing takes time and that joy and grief can coexist. For the weary edges of our faith that struggle to hold on to hope, forgive us. Remind us of Zachariah and Elizabeth. Remind us that your good news knows no bounds. Amen. Family of faith, no matter how many times we wear ourselves thin, no matter how many times we lose ourselves to distractions, 
No matter how many times we ask ourselves, how can this be? God's love keeps showing up for us. So say this with me. We are loved, we are claimed, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Loving God, the source of our joy, as we turn our hearts to your word, we ask that you would soften us, soften the callousness in our hearts, weave yourself in between the cracks in our spirits, and plant hope where there is room. And as you do this, like flowers toward the sun, we will turn ourselves towards you, eager to hear a word so good that we cannot help but ask ourselves, how can this be? With openness and gratitude we pray, amen. You may be seated and I invite any children who'd like to come up for the children's message to join me up front. Good morning, good morning. All right, smaller crowd than we've had recently, so we might need a little um, adult participation as well. Uh, today I want to talk about emotions. What are emotions? How we feel about things? Okay, so if I told you to show me um, happy, what does happy look like? Okay, great, and what does sad look like? Okay, and what are some other emotions? Can you think of some? Angry, angry. what does angry look like? Mm, okay, what else? What are some other emotions? What happens when you're really tired? Oh, they got tired down, okay. We're gonna talk today about an emotion called being weary. Do you know what it means to be weary? Kind of a different word. It's kind of like tired, but it's like, it's like you wouldn't be able to sleep and then stop being weary. Whereas if you're tired, you take a nap. So weary is something deeper than it's like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to finish all my homework. I'm weary of this kind of thing. Some of you will learn about homework later. Um, do you think you can have two emotions at one time? Yeah, what can you feel at the same time? What are two emotions you can have at the same time? Happy but sad. What do you look like when you're happy but sad? Yeah, like it's really hard to have both emotions happening inside you at once, right? So um, will you guys get a little silly with me? My sister and I used to do this thing where we would start with a really mad face, make your eyes really mad, you're really, really mad, but then, keeping your eyes mad, you smile. Two emotions. It's goofy, right? Doesn't that look silly? Yeah. So um, today we're gonna talk about how you can be tired or weary, but also still have joy and be happy. So it's complex stuff today. If you have not seen Inside Out, it's a great introduction to it. Um, but we're going to talk about how we can be both of those things at once. Sound good? No Sunday school today. <laughs> so I'll send you back to your folks. Um, and thank you for coming up. And we'll continue our worship service with our scripture. Do we have a... Oh, perfect. Our scripture today is from Psalms 80. I will read the yellow text, and you may respond with the white. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You will lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine 
that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God, as your face shine, that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you make made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Just like last week, we have a very long gospel reading. So you may be seated for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel today comes from Luke, the first chapter, verses 1 through 23. Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those from the beginning, were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I, too, decided, after investigating everything carefully from the very first, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theolopolis, so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly order of Abiha. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as a priest before God, his section was on duty. He was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will name him John. You will have... You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make people to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went home. The Gospel of our Lord. 
We've had a shift from the book of Matthew now into Luke as we prepare for Christmas. So we have to think a little bit about Luke and the background of Luke to fully understand what's happening here. So what profession did Luke have? Does anyone know, before he was a disciple and a writer, what profession Luke had? He was a doctor, yes. He was well-trained, not as a religious leader, but as a doctor. He was educated, so he's writing from that perspective. Does anyone know the audience of the people he was writing to? Matthew was writing to the Jewish community. Does anyone know primarily who Luke is writing to? It is the Gentiles, correct. So Luke, as a physician, is writing to the Gentile community primarily, where Matthew was writing, writing to the Jewish community, and he was a tax collector. So we have these different jobs happening. Okay? Um, and just as a characteristic of Luke, so you know, when we look at the Gospels, Mark is the shortest of the Gospels. He tends to say things exactly, just quickly. How fast can we get through the story? And he says immediately a lot when Mark is writing. Matthew is a little bit longer. He adds a couple more details in, but still tends to be relatively brief, also knowing that he doesn't need as much background information for the Jewish community because they've been growing up with the Old Testament. And now Luke, writing to the Gentiles, is, we'll say, a little long-winded. No offense, Luke. Sometimes, a little long-winded. He likes to really paint us a picture of what's going on. So his is a little bit longer. And then if we were to look at John, John is the poetic one. And so his isn't quite as long as Luke, but it gets a much more poetic language. So that's who's writing this book. We're in the first chapter, verse 1, so we don't have to look what came before. And I'll let you know that what comes after is another message from Gabriel to Mary. So that's what's going to come up next. So uh, the other background information you need to know is about Zechariah. So he's a priest, and he's a priest in a specific area, back where Elizabeth lives, that's where he's the priest at. It's kind of like how I'm the pastor of this church, um, and there's other pastors in this area. Zachariah is a priest, and there's other priests around, and for two weeks out of the year, that group of priests would be called to come to the temple and perform their priestly duties at the temple. So, you might have been thinking that this is a place that Zechariah goes all the time, but it's not. This is a set-aside two-week period of his year every year that he would go to the temple. And then in that temple, there's a room called the sanctuary. Did you hear that familiar language? He was called into the sanctuary. Now, today, we're in a sanctuary, and we are all welcome to be in here in the glory of God. But back in the day of Zechariah, there was one priest who would be invited in to offer the sacrifice in the sanctuary in that specific room. And they would cast lots to see who would do that. Basically, all of their names go on a piece of, little piece of rock. They would see which one came out first, and that person's going in to the Holy of Holies, uh, into the sanctuary. So Zechariah, it doesn't tell us how many times he gets to do this in his life, but it might only be once in his life. Maybe more, but really only a handful of times. This is a very big deal. And when he's delayed within the sanctuary, no one else can go in and check and see what's happening because he's the only one in there offering a sacrifice. Okay, there's the background information you need to know. Um, when we are looking at Advent this year, our theme is how does a weary world rejoice. And this text about Zechariah points to maybe one of the places where weariness is incredibly clear, both back in his day and our day. The waiting around the hope of a child. Zechariah and Elizabeth couldn't go to the doctor and find out what was going on. It's assumed that the problem is with Elizabeth because 
they didn't have any way to know that it wouldn't be. And they have been waiting and waiting and waiting. And now they have given up on having a child. That's the point that they've reached. They've just said, we're too old. It's not going to happen now. Has this happened before in the Bible? Sarah and Abraham. Sarah laughs when she's told she's going to have a child. There's no way. Because what happens when we are looking ahead and hoping and longing for something and it's not happening, we start to get weary. And what is the difference between weary and tired? If you were going to describe it to someone, what would you say the difference between weary and tired is? What do you think? That's a fantastic description. Weary is, tired is of the body. Weary is of your soul and your mind. Um, and it can't be solved by a nap. It drags on you. And you can't see how whatever it is is ever going to be resolved. So I like to think of it in terms of giving us tunnel vision. We start out with all of this hope in front of us, and we see all of these possibilities, all of this that could happen, all of this that God could do. And then time goes on, and it's not happening, and it's not happening, and it's not happening. And the more weary you get in the midst of waiting, the harder it is to see all of the ways that God could be at work because it feels like you're just seeing all the ways that God isn't at work. So our view starts to get narrower. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is because we have orderly minds, and that's kind of how it works, is when we see that things aren't happening, we like to then eliminate them, and it gets narrower. But it's also a way that we protect ourselves because when you live your life in this wide open way, you leave yourself open to get hurt again and again and again. And so as a way to protect yourself, you start to just push hope out to the sides and let weariness become your focus so that you don't have to be hurt. It's a perfectly natural thing for us to do as humans. But in the midst of all of that, God is calling out to us and promising that God is doing something new. That what is out in front of us, what has always been, what we're stuck in, is not how it will always be be. And our weariness can come from much more than just talking about the longing for a family. It can come from longing for peace on this earth. We can become weary not seeing any way that peace can actually arrive. And the truth that we know and hold with us is that the full peace of Christ we will experience and we get to experience pieces of it here on earth, but we also know that because of the realities of sin and death and the complexities of being human means that we won't see full peace on earth here. But God gives us glimpses of it so that we don't get so buried in our weariness that we forget that God is at work. And we hold on to the promise that the kingdom of heaven in its full glory will be peace. Now, each of us carries weariness in our own way. And what's happening in your life, whatever has made you tunnel visioned on that weariness, is very specific to you. But the promise of God is always the same. For each of us, the promise is, is that God does something new. In Advent, we wait to celebrate the birth of Christ, and 
it is so easy to wait for something that you know there's an ending to, right? We mark it on a calendar. We get down to December 23rd, and we know that the next day we're celebrating Christmas Eve. That's easy waiting. The other Advents in our lives are not easy. The other Advents in our lives where we're waiting for something, and we don't know when the end of that waiting is coming, that's excruciating. When we're waiting for something, and we're not sure if at the end of the waiting the answer is yes or no, it can make us so weary. During this Advent season, we're going to learn how to point to our weariness and admit it and say, this part of my life is giving me tunnel vision that's making it so hard for me to see what God is doing. And as we go through Advent, then we'll learn about how connection helps us to open up to these possibilities and to be able to hold joy and the places in our life where we're weary at the same time. We'll learn about how our Christian community can help each other in the midst of weariness. And then we're going to learn about opening ourselves up to being in awe of what God is doing. Learning to look for those things so that we can, in the midst of our weariness, still be at awe that we are loved by God. And at the end of Advent, we will stand at the manger and we will celebrate the promises of Christ among us that did not end at Jesus' death, but instead continues to be with us every single day. We get to have the whole experience. We get the and. We can be weary and hold on to the promises of Christ. We can be sad and reach out for help. We can have joy and we can share it with others, especially in the midst of Advent waiting. My prayer for you this week is that you will be brave enough to admit when you are weary to yourself and to others. My prayer for you is that you will be opened up to connection and awe of what God has done for us. And my prayer for you is that you would not stay tunnel visioned on weariness, but be comforted by what God is doing new in our church and in our lives and in our world. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we sing Comfort, Comfort, Now My People, which is found in the red hymnal, number 256, or on the screen.
please join me in these words of our affirmation of faith. We believe in God who hears our prayers, who knows all about our weariness. We believe in God who wants joy and delight for us, not just survival and existence. We believe in God who looks ahead, who is not done dreaming for the world and for us. God who sends hope in the form of people and change, movements and spirit. And so in this space, we bring our joy and our weariness and we trust that God is already at work. Yes, we believe in God who hears our prayers. Thanks be to God for loving us like that. Amen. We join together in the prayers of intercession. Gracious God, you carry us through our days. You know every word on our tongue, every hair on our head. You know the dreams in our hearts and the weight of our bones. You also know the weariness we bring with us into the morning and into this space. So with honesty, we come before you, both with full hearts full of gratitude and with prayer requests on our lips. First, holy God, we thank you for the gift of this life that gives energy for birthday candles and sunrises, for handwritten cards and jobs that we are passionate about, for stories that can make us laugh until we cry, and for friends that feel like family, good and gracious God. In addition to these prayers of gratitude, loving God, we also bring you the things that weigh heavy on our hearts for gun violence, for family and friends in chemotherapy, for seasons of transition and grief that won't let us go. We pray for everyone who is still waiting for the news that they will have a family and those who are heartbroken at loss. We ask for your attention and grace for these folks. We ask for your love and care. And in our community, we especially pray for Eric. We pray for Israel and Palestine. And we pray for the friends and family of Steve Poole. Good and gracious God. Take this yoke from us. Relieve some of the burden on our backs and wrap your arms around places where we feel most tender. And as we enter into this new season of Advent, a season marked with joy, hope, and light, we ask that you would remind us that our full humanity is welcome here. There is room for bo both joy and grief. There is room for weariness and awe. There is room for faith and doubt. For nothing is too big or too far gone for your love to reach it. Good and gracious God. Knowing that you hear our prayers, both spoken and those spoken in the tenderness of our hearts, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
I invite you to be seated. We will now pass our offering plates. And while we pass our offering plates, we'll sing, Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Thank you. We give you thanks, O oh God, for these gifts that you have given us that we uh, gratefully and thankfully return to you, trusting in your grace and mercy and knowing that we are joined together in the mission of the gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise to our to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to our God, knowing that God is with us in our weariness and our joy. We remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and after he gave, gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gather together, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Everyone is welcome to come up for communion. We'll commune along the railing. You can stand or kneel as you feel most comfortable. We have grape juice and wine in the tray. The grape juice is along the outside circle. The wine is in the center. Our bread is gluten-free this morning, and thank you to Charmaine who cooks that for us. And we also have pre-packaged elements if you would prefer that. Those are not gluten-free. Please come, everything is ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you today and every day. Amen. We have a couple of announcements for you today. We are officially into Advent. If you didn't notice the blue, we have changed seasons. So we're starting Advent a week early this year because Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday. And so Advent has four Sundays in it, typically. So we're starting now and so that we can get through all four Sundays of Advent. And then on Christmas Eve, which is a Sunday, we won't have a Sunday morning service. We'll just have a Christmas Eve service at uh, that evening at 5, 5. Um, so I was like, 5, 5.30, I should get that right. 5 o'clock, we'll be having Christmas Eve service. So we do that so that you don't have to come Christmas Eve morning to hear Advent 4 and then come again for Christmas Eve. You're welcome. Um, also important to note, we have a December 3rd congregational meeting. So that's next weekend. We have a congregational meeting immediately following the service. Please stay for that. We do important work of the church, like pass budgets, which is important for us to do. But we also get to celebrate what this past year of ministry has meant and get excited about what God is calling us to for the next year. So please plan on joining us for that. If you can't be here in person, there will also be an online option we are providing the cookies for the preschool Christmas program this year. So if you can provide a dozen cookies, please let me know. And their Christmas program is happening, we think, December 11th at 7. Okay. We're, we're pretty sure. If that changes, I'll let you know. Um, that's what's on our official calendar right now. Uh, but if you could bring a dozen cookies, let me know, and we just need those here either the week before or the Sunday before. Um, or if you're like me, uh, Monday the 11th is fine. Um, so that's happening. We're excited to be able to provide that for them. We will also be having a worship service called Worship for the Weary. That's happening the evening of December 13th. And sometimes you might hear these called the longest night services or a blue Christmas service. It's a chance for people who are feeling particularly weary this season to come and have a chance to acknowledge that joy can be really hard this time of year. And so this service is geared for people who are having a hard time this season. And it's a time for you, if you are not having a particularly hard season this year to come and be with people, be in community and connection with them. So know that this service is welcome for everyone and that if you are feeling particularly down this season, that would be a, a good service for you to attend. The Giving Tree had all the names taken. Linda, do you want to talk more about that? So we committed to Tiffany Park Elementary to provide gift certificates for 20 children. And their parents take the gift certificates, they go to school and get them and buy their child a gift for Christmas. These are children who would no, not get anything otherwise. I have uh, learned in the past that we have more requests for certificates than we have certificate holders. Mm -hmm. So we make five extra every year now. Of those five, I have one left. So if somebody wasn't here last week or has thought about it would like to take one, I have one left. If you, uh, I've, I mean, I've also had a couple extras donated by people who didn't take one but bought cards anyway. So all around, it's great news. We'll have at least 25 kids taken care of. But I do have one left. If somebody wants it, see me after service. I also, oh, I wanted to give a shout out to Cindy Holm and her sisters for hand making all of these. Aww. She does a great job every year. Um, the other good news I wanted to share is from the two-week coat drive that we did with the preschool, I took 54 coats to the Center of Hope last week, and I have 10 extra coats that are summertime wear, which wouldn't be appropriate to take now, so I have those in my garage until spring. Um, if anybody has any questions about these certificates, how they work, or anything that I haven't covered, please see me after church. And if, they ha if they've taken an envelope to bring it back? Yes, next week. They all have to be back to me next week, or I have to go out and buy cards. Yeah, this blue tag explains everything, so if you forget. But yeah, it's Walmart, Target, or Fred Meyer, $25 gift certificate. You can go right to Safeway and get them all without going to those stores, but, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay? All right. Thanks. Thank you. I want to, I want to uplift the fact that 
doing the giving tree this way helps the parents be able to be part of that gift giving. They know their child best. They know what sizes fit their kid best. They know what to get. And it also helps the parent have the joy of getting to pick that out and the anticipation for them to see their child's face on um, whichever day they open presents. So I'm really grateful to this congregation for your generosity and how you help the whole family celebrate this season, not just the kids. Katie. I just have a couple of things. First of all, I'm part of a Lions Club that is a group sponsorship coordinator for the Reads Across America over at Tahoma National Cemetery. So if anyone's interested in sponsoring a wreath to be laid on a veteran grave this year or participate in the ceremony or attend the ceremony, see me. The wreath sponsorship deadline for this year is coming up on the 28th, but those are real easy to go online and sponsor a wreath and I can provide you with a link easily. The second thing is Sarah Dutton and I are kind of hosting, I guess for lack of a better term, a field trip. <laughs> Anybody who's interested, join us. It's in the weekly. It's to the Bellevue Festival of the Nativity, which is a wonderful event. There will be a carpool from the church at around 1 on December 9th. It's a Saturday, and we're going to truck on up to Bellevue. It's a, a big event for the community, hundreds and hundreds of nativity scenes, everything from the rubber ducky nativity up through really ornate nativities. It's really interesting to see all the different interpretations, like why not a giraffe, you know, <laughs> if it's something that relates to the culture where they um, are trying to relate to this whole major event in world history. So there's also musical performances at the event. So it's free, come with us, and we'll come back to the church. We'll be going, leaving the church around one, coming back around three, and then have some cocoa and cookies and just chat about what we saw in conversation about that whole thing. So let me know if you could be a driver for us, and also if you just kind of let us know if you're thinking of it and you might need a ride so we can kind of plan to make sure we have seat belts for everyone. Mm -hmm. Nobody is riding without a seatbelt. So uh, those are my two events, and back to you. All right, so that's December 9th um, for the nativity. So you can go up and see all of those different nativities. Uh, our wrapped in warmth tree is starting to collect hats, gloves, socks, mittens. Please continue to bring those items, and whenever you bring them, just go ahead and go up and place them on the tree. And, um, yeah, it's a good visual reminder for us here in worship that there are people who are in need and that we are called to be part of that and to help them. So please continue to do that. Um, lastly, for Advent, if you asked for a printed devotional, those are printed and ready for you. So come see me if you asked for your Advent devotional to be printed. If you can access it online and feel comfortable doing so and know that you'll be able to read it that way, the link went out in the weekly last week, and we can continue to send that out as well so people can see it. But a great way to set some time aside every day to dive into this theme a little bit more of how does a weary world rejoice? There's also an advent calendar that goes along with it. I've printed a large one that's back by the kitchen on the bulletin board. And then there's some smaller ones printed if you want to take one home. But it's also really easy to take a picture with uh, of your phone. And think about how you might be using that advent calendar for spiritual practices throughout the month. So take a look at all of those resources that come with our curriculum. And yeah, did I miss anything? Oh, and if you're a child, I have a child's advent calendar, too. Just come see me. All right. Anything else? With that, I ask that you rise, and you'll receive the benediction, and then we'll sing our closing song. May you be brave enough to name when you are weary. May you continue to hold hope for yourself and others. May you be comforted by the presence of God walking alongside us in our weariness. In the name of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, amen.
Go in peace. God is with you.